In this video, we're going to talk about using functions on arrays and how it's different from using functions on just regular vectors. So when you use functions on arrays, by default, many of the functions work in the first dimension. And when I say first dimension, what I mean is, so let's say we had a, um, let's say an array that was, this is a zero, a zero. Let's say I had an array that was like that. Let's say this was an array. If I were to say a is equal to the sum of array, what will happen is MATLAB by default will work down each of the columns because that's the first dimension. So in MATLAB, this is the first dimension, and then across the rows is the second dimension. So this is the second dimension. So in this case here, MATLAB is going to go down each of the rows and produce the sum of each individual row and save that inside of a vector. So the first number will be nine, the second number will be three, and the third number will be three as well. And then so if I wanted to, so let's say I wanted to find the sum across the rows. Now I wanna take the sum in the second dimension. There's two ways of doing that. So the first way is I can explicitly tell the function that I want to take the sum across the second dimension. And so I do that by using the optional second input. A lot of these functions have optional inputs in order to, uh, a lot of these math functions have optional inputs in order to do this operation across rows of arrays. So I can say, I saw my array, but now I want you to take the sum across the second dimension. And so what's going to happen here is MATLAB is going to go across each of the rows. And since it's going across each of the rows, it's going to produce back a vertical vector here where the first number is the sum of the first row and the second number is the sum of the second row. So in this case, we would have seven and that is also seven. That is not seven, actually. I, I can't, I can't add, um, that's eight, okay? So we will get a vector, a vertical vector that looks like that. And so that's one way of going across the rows. Another way is to continue to use the first dimension, but change our array. So what I mean is, so right now we have our array that looks like that, but let's say instead of uh, having my array just like, look like it is right now, what if we kind of rotated it or swapped the rows for columns and the columns for rows? So if I had my array that looked like this instead, right? So if I had my array look like this, now I could just use the sum function that goes down the columns. And so when I swap the rows and columns, this is called transposition. Notice how the first row of the original array became the first column of the original array. And the second row became the second column. In order to transpose an array, we use the apostrophe. So let's say this is array two. In order to create array two, I would say array and then the apostrophe after that. That's telling MATLAB to transpose the array. So if I wanted to do this third way of finding the sum across the rows, I can now just say sum of array transposed. However, it's important to note that just like before, this is going to go down the columns. So therefore the number that I get back or the vector that I get back is going to be horizontal, not vertical like the other one. So in this case, I would get seven and then eight, like that. So in the last example, we were just taking sums of individual rows or all the rows or all the columns. But what if I wanted to find out the sum of the entire array? So I wanted to add up all of the numbers inside of the array and just get back one number. How would I do that? So once again, we have our, uh, I think it was this. We have an, our, our array like that. That is a zero. Once again, I can't write zeros. And I want to find the overall sum. So I want to add up each of the numbers and get back one number. So we talked about before, if I did, oh, so this is array. So if I did a is equal to the sum of array, 
I would get back 933. Three. And then now, so that's the sum of each of the columns. And then if I want to find the overall sum, I can just sum those three numbers and, and, and get my answer. So if I had my overall sum, so I'll call it OV sum, I don't know. Now I can take the sum of A. So this is going to add each of the numbers from A together. And so I'll get back 15, just the number 15 doesn't have to be a vector. I don't know why I wrote a vector. It's just the number 15, right? So, and we can condense this into one line of code because here we're, we're doing one sum and assigning it to a variable. Then we're taking the sum of that same variable and assigning it to another variable. So we can condense this by just saying OV sum, overall sum, is the sum of the sum of my array. So this, so inside, so MATLAB starts at the inside first. So this right here will produce back the the nine, three, and three, and then it's taking the sum of that vector in order to produce my overall sum. All right, so let's go over this problem. So I said I wanted to find the difference between the largest number in an array and the smallest number in an array. And so translating that into useful functions, that means I'm going to have to find the maximum number in the array and the minimum number in the array. And so just like the sum function, a lot of the math functions like mean, max, min, prod, a lot of those work down the columns. So if I want to find the overall max or the overall min, I'm going to have to do that, um, that double calling trick that we talked about, call the function twice. So if I had, so just for reference, Let's say I had two. Sure. So let's say this for my array. In order to find the maximum number, so let's say max. And so notice here I, I have to call, I can't have a variable name the same as a function if I want to use it. So that's why I use two x's. And so I have max of my array. So if I just did this, remember this is going to go down each of the columns. So this would produce back nine, four, and eight. And that's not what we want to do. We want to then find the maximum of that vector as well. So therefore I want to, ch I want to change this line of code into being the max of the max of array. And likewise, for my minimum number, I'll say the min, the min of my array. So then now if I want to find the difference, that can just be my max minus my min. And that's it.